So let's improve this monk. One more attack. One more. One more. Attack, of course. Just do one more. And more critical strikes. And that's on average will give us 90 damage in one turn. So with basic monk we got 20 dex, 16 con, 18 wisdom and 99 hit points with 19 armor class. That comes from our dexterity and from our normal defense with wisdom. So pretty nice character. And that's main problem with monks. They really depend on many different stats. So when you go in tavern brawler monk and you want for example strength, you need to, to sacrifice your dexterity. And dexterity will sacrifice your armor class, for example. Or you can sacrifice your constitution. Then you will get around 50 HP on max level and you will be one-shotted by level 6 wizards with fireball, for example. So maximum we can get unarmed strike with 1d8 plus 5 and 1d4 plus 4 from our passive. One flurry of blows with 1d8 plus 5 and one more 1d8 plus 5 and these two attacks will get this 1d4 plus 4 from wisdom from our passive then we can try key resonation punch for example or do one more unarmed strike but better try the key resonating punch when enemy prone with advantage and then we can disengage and make this resonating blast for 3d6 force damage so everything combined making around 85 average damage but it's considering 100% hit chance and when we fight an 18 AC enemy and that's pretty nice to consider it's not too high not too low AC we're making around 51 average damage and that's per round and that's require you to play like smartly move around engage disengage and that's like uh, how I like to play my monk actually. But I know guys, you like to just go and do incredible amounts of damage. So hail and meshes adventures. Welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3. It's me as a spot king and I'm presenting you craziest monk build with stubborn blow roller feet ever. So I checked some other builds that other guys made and I saw many of them using rage. I mean rage to multiclass into barbarian of course and that's like horrible mistake and that's like very horrible mistake so we're not making this today we're making like craziest and most optimized orc ever because we're making half orc we get a little bit dark vision we can be downed but we will be revived with one hit point and we get savage attacks. You need to land a critical hit with a melee weapon attack. Unarmed strikes should count actually as melee weapon attacks, so it should work. So our race is Monk, with Monk we get in flurry blows, that's nice action that use key points and you get your key points. You get unarmed defense, you get instead of using Khan as barbarian we'll use your wisdom. Our unarmed attacks Scaling with dexterity instead of strength if our dexterity is higher, but it won't be with Tavern Brawler. And we get bonus action for an armed attack. It's nice when we lose our, all our key points, So, but we actually don't care about it. It's mostly useful in early game. For background, we get a soldier for athletics intimidation to just increase our athletics as high as possible. And most importantly, we need nice ability distribution. And I like to do something like this. Because we will be using Tavern Brawler, we need three, not even stats. So we maxing out strength at first for 17 strength. We get in 14 in dexterity to get armor class, initiative and other stats. 13 constitution and 13 wisdom. And 9 in intelligence. And basically we're rounding up any stat we wish. Good idea is to round up constitution for hit points or wisdom for more AC. Whatever you like will work. And let's proceed to our game to make our champion brawler. So let's level up and you start your adventure as monk. Second level will get you more key points, more movement when you're not wearing armor or using shield. And actions like dash, disengage and defense when you're using your key points and bonus action. So not a big deal, but nice features for early game. Monk level 3, we're picking our subclass, we're going for way of the open hand and what it's doing, it gives us flurry blows. So how you play this monk on this level? Quick explanation and example. So at early levels your weapon will do more damage than your normal strikes that basically forces you to use main hand attack with your weapon most of the time. So when you use it, you get an ability to use unarmed strike as bonus action. And this will use no key points, but you can use flurry blows with key points and bonus action too and it will do 
two unarmed stri strikes in one turn. There is two flurry punches, one will help you disengage and calls stagger. You can have push action to push your enemies up to 5 meters and you have topple action. So stagger used when you need to disengage after your attack, push used if you want to disengage and push enemies at the same time. Sometimes you don't watch to want to push enemies. And topple is nice if you got big target and this will give you advantage on your next turns. So basically if you want to attack more on the same enemy, better use and start with a topple. It's like your go-to action. And yeah, don't forget to attack. So that's like basically our early game mode. Let's make him like crazy destruction machine. And there's like some problems with the mod. So level 4 will get us feet and of course we're making Tavern Brawler mod. Increasing our strength up to 18. And what Tavern Brawler does? It gives us strange modifier to our unarmed attacks and attack rolls. And just like that, we continue our adventure as our monk to level 5. On level 5, we get an extra attack. So that's like big and nice point when we can actually stop playing monk and continue to our subclasses. But better stop and go to level 6 because level 6 unlocks additional unarmed movement and most importantly, subclass features. And this will add 1d4 plus our wisdom modifier to our damage rolls. And because we're doing a lot of damage rolls, it's like big damage multiplier. So we definitely want to hit at least level 6 with Monk before we start into multiclass. And afterwards, we actually don't need this evasion. While it's like funny futures and mocky points, we don't need it too much. So what I see many guys doing is adding barbarian class to get this rage and rage adding two extra damage with melee and improvised weapons, basically with our hands. So while it sounds nice, actually that's not a big deal, because we got this 18 strange to our brawler, it does, it's doing a lot of damage, and if we're going into barbarian right now, we're losing feats that can round up or increase our strange even more. And additionally, this rage costs you bonus section, so you always start your fight with the raging and you're losing this bonus section. And bonus section is the one action that you used to use the flurry blows, and you actually want to use them as much as possible. So at level 6 monk, you definitely want to unequip your quarter stuff, and don't forget, you need to go to the passives and turn on your passive, otherwise you won't do this bonus damage. So my advice is to go up to level 8 with monk, at least. Because with just two levels, we will get at level 8 Monk our additional feat. And this feat will be ability improvement to wisdom and rounding up intelligence. This achieves two things. Wisdom will add to our armor class. And it's pretty low right now. And additionally, it will add to our damage. And right now, we can actually stop with Monk. We don't need any additional features that comes later. Because Monk level 9 we get, will get you this key resonation punch. And we already know this damage from this. So instead, again, many guys going to Barbarian. But not me. We changing to Fighter. So what's Fighter doing? Fighter, we're picking defense uh, fighting style, but it doesn't matter because we're not wearing armor anyway. More on that in a minute. Then we're getting one more level in Fighter and we're getting this action surge. So we can use it. It doesn't cost anything and you can do additional attacks in one turn. Then we can go later fighters and pick our subclass. So about fighters. We can stop on Monk, for example, at level 6, yeah, and go to 6 fighters. This will give us a same feats, so we can max out our stats. And level 5 fighter will give you this extra attack, but they don't stack. So basically, you don't need level 5 fighter anyway. But what we need is our subclass champion for improved critical hit to increase numbers we roll on critical hit while attacking. So we pick a champion, and our last level, level 4 fighter, we get an additional feat. Again, we can go into... Barbarian, for example, and it will add a plus two to all our attacks when we're raging. Rage can end quickly if you're not attacking one turn or being attacked, so just adding plus two into Strange will do kinda the same and even better. So, let me explain. So let's look on how our damage calculated. Let's attack this dude. Just like that. First of all, we're rolling our attack roll. Then we're adding our proficiency from level. And then we're adding Tavern Brawler and Strange Modifier. So basically we're adding plus 10 to our attack roll. This drastically increases our hit chance. Then we're doing our damage. So our damage is basically 1d6, not 1d8, because we're lower level monk. It's just 1d6. But on average, 1d8 doing just one more damage than 1d6. So most importantly, we're adding our Strange and one more time, we add in our strange modifier to our damage. 
and just like that we're doing 16 damage but don't forget we're adding our passive so we're doing this damage roll again and we're adding 1d4 plus 2 from wisdom and in the first turn we can do two attacks with an arm strike then we can, can do flurry of blows so we're doing two more attacks and they kinda goes with the same rules so we just use for example topple on this guy and as you can see it's uh, just like two normal attacks with the same rules with the same necrotic damage applied and then we can use action surge to do two more attacks so if you hit your full combo with basic monk you're doing minimum of uh, around 57 damage maximum around 102 for average around 85 damage while having more hit points and far more armor class with this build on average we're doing around 70 damage so if you would like to get more armor class at least 15 then we definitely dump in two strange and get in plus two wisdom and this will lose us on average around four damage and i guess you see problems with multiclassing now well it can look amazing and sound amazing it's actually not that good if you play your class correctly but what's the point of this build actually you will understand how broken it is just in two seconds look on my cursor so against 18 ac enemy with all the bonuses from strange that are added to our attack rolls we get an 85 percent hit chance and that's on average will give us 90 damage in one turn on one turn and 60 damage on one turn on every turn you take considering you got at least some key points and that's 10 more damage on average against normal mon but don't forget more chances to hit means more chances to land this flurry blows top so just look at this commander Jalk. he got 18 AC right now and we will use this topple on him so let's go and unleash our power he toppled and right now we got 98% hit chance and we hit him with advantage means we're rolling additional dices and that means we have more chances to land critical hit so we're basically doing two more attacks and we're using our action surge we're doing two more attacks with advantage and just like that in one turn we're making more than 100 damage just like that that's crazy so let's topple him and attack yo critical hit so look on this critical hits and why it's crazy build so you're basically rolling one more dice of damage and you're making 2d6 damage on a critical strike and as you can see there's no savage attacks from orc this means there's like 100% not needed race you basically can pick whatever race you like for this style and this build and coolest part on critical strikes you're rolling double necrotic damage that's why champion is like best pick for this style of monk just like that and then action surge and more critical strikes and one more so to combat our weaknesses we can give up on our unarmored movement speed and instead we can get this medium armor which can give you around 17 armor total and you can get shield because you don't need this unarmored movement speed anyway if you go with this and just like that you will get this champion tavern brawler monk with 22 ac then just before the fight or just at the fight start you can go and just haste on yourself with your mage from level 5 at least and how brawler is ready okay just look at this 24 ac we still can use step of wind dash to travel large areas if we need it to and just like that let's start with the topple omg one more attack one more and one more and we can do one more attack of course and we can use action search to just do one more hit and one more hit and even right now we can stop yeah so if you don't care about your like stylistic approach you can definitely go with medium armor and this will make like a really broken character of tavern brawling strange based monk i hope you like this build and it will be enjoyable experience for you in your adventures in baldur's gate 3 but if you want more cool multi-class builds watch on the screen right now it's my top three multi-class builds that can be used on you on your or on your companions when you're making your playthrough see you in the next videos guys